to talk today about the scope of this operation. From the confession letter, we learned that there were six barricades. Now, that's a car in front, a car uh, behind, a car to the uh, left, actually three cars on the left, and then the Cadillac pulling up makes that sixth barricade. So when you think about six barricades, that's potentially six people that are in on it. Now, I don't believe Frank Alexander was in on it. He was driving the car that was behind, so maybe that makes it five, maybe it makes it four, but they, they orchestrated this so that there would be six barricades. So there's a potential of six people. From the Michael Moore testimony, we learn that uh, he was standing next to Reggie Wright Jr. and he heard Gotham come over the radio. Then he hears another voice that comes on the radio that says, don't say nothing over the radio. And uh, we've heard since then that that voice is pro likely David Kenner. We don't know that for sure. We haven't verified that. But, but you know, it does make sense. Somebody who was quarterbacking the operation uh, comes on the radio and says, don't say nothing over the radio. And then Reggie gets on the radio and shuts everybody's radios down. So that means there's radios. That means that there's at least three people that are on the radio and probably more. So in a military grade assassination, you would have spotters. You would have uh, obviously the shooters. The shooters would need to be somebody that could be cut loose in case they were killed or caught. And they did everything they could to disarm people, but there was still somebody who got off a shot. And, and so, you know, hey, things can happen. Maybe a shot is a lucky shot. It disables the vehicle or it kills the driver. And next thing you know, the shooters are caught. So you have to have shooters that can be cut loose in case something happens. And in this case, they picked shooters. Uh, and the confession letter tells us that there were three shooters that one of them was, uh, was there to take out Tupac, and two of them were there to take out Suge. Well, that makes sense because Tupac was on the side of the shooter, and Suge was on the other side, so why not double up with two shooters to take out Suge? Now, we're also told that one of those guns jammed and uh, that uh, the other shooter only got off two shots at Suge. And so that makes sense that Suge was only grazed by a bullet or, you know, he wasn't severely injured. And uh, so this all starts to make sense. So let's think about this in terms of a movie set. The only thing that you see at the conclusion uh, of the work that's done to make a movie is you see the actors acting their parts. Now, what you don't see, you don't see the generators, you don't see the cable, you don't see the technicians, you don't see the director. You don't see the technicians. You don't see the DP that's photographing this. Mm -hmm. So in a similar fashion, and a lot of intelligence organizations, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Gary Webb, or not Gary Webb, George Webb. George Webb, who's doing an investigation I've been listening to, and I'm stealing some of his nomenclature, and it's a really interesting investigation into where Eric Braverman and Seth Rich went. I don't want to get embroiled in that, but I just want to shout out to them because I'm, I'm definitely learning some of the intelligence uh, tactics and some of the intelligence nomenclature. They call it a school play. And so when you think about the school play, you have to have a director. Who's the director? It's likely David Kenner. He's a criminal defense attorney who had many, many years of trials come up. He would be the perfect person to plan the perfect crime. And so you have a director of the school play. You have actors that are acting in the school play. Some of those actors were over at the MGM Grand Hotel. You had Orlando Anderson who, you know, took a beatdown. Why did Orlando Anderson take a beatdown? What if Tupac would have gotten to the casino and would have gone in and started gambling? What if he got lucky and started winning? He wouldn't want to leave. That beatdown happens just before they enter the casino. So that beatdown is probably to move the timetable forward. They got to keep things moving. We got, a, we got an intersection that's enabled. Uh, technologically, we've got bike cops, we've got, there are a lot of actors in on this. 
Probably what happened is those bike cops that pulled over Suge and Tupac were waiting for the all clear sign so that they could release the vehicle. That means everything's set up, ready to do the hit. That also means maybe traffic gets stopped down further down the road. So it looks like things are a little bit easier. We allow a little congestion to get out of the way ahead so that the vehicle can escape. This is the type of thing that happens in a military grade operation. Now, we know that there are a number of people who have military experience that are circulating around death row records. Nate Dogg uh, was, was uh, in the military. Kevin Gaines was in the military. Rafael Perez was in the military. It'd be interesting if the crowd could actually source and figure out who else was in the military because this was done as a military grade operation. One of the people in this type of operation that you'd want to want to rope in and have in on this would be the person that would benefit. So you have Suge, who's married to Sharitha. She's estranged from the situation with Suge. She's dating Officer Kevin Gaines, who has a military background. And uh, if anything's to happen to Suge, she's the one that would inherit the shares. So you have to have leverage over her so that if she does inherit those shares that you can manipulate and get her to do what you want her to do. And so that's, that's why you would try and rope her in to a situation like this. And that's something that we learned from the, from the patents uh, in the confession letter. And that confession letter is pretty important because it's really a time capsule. That thing sat in a file since 1998 when Chris Blanchford uh, originally had this whole drama unfurl where, you know, they were trying to drop off the murder weapon and all that. He was going to do an interview. The interview never happened. And at the same time he was doing the interview, they tried to get the weapon dropped off. And so that has a, a bunch of really salient details about what was happening. They talk about a gang summit that was disguised as a peace conference where they got the green light to target both Suge and Tupac. And so there were a number of people that were there that were in on it. So we're looking at maybe 30 or 40 people that would know things. The actors that were at the MGM Grand Hotel supervising. You have one person supervising the Orlando Anderson interrogation. You have another person taking him away at the end. Obviously, there was more to that Orlando Anderson than meets the eye because you have somebody collecting him. Somebody who shows up, who's known to the people that are detaining him, and escorts him away. That's part of a school play. And that tells us that there are def definitely more people in on this murder than meets the eye. Now, um, I would like to reach out if, if the crowd can find out any other people that were involved in either the Rampart scandal or in death row records that have military backgrounds. I think that's the next area that we'd like to focus on in this investigation. And by the way, we've had some great n new things coming in. Appreciate everybody that's reaching out, everybody that's sending off emails, documents, what have you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you all. And let's continue this investigation.